Aphrodite, Greek, comma is the Greek goddess of love, beauty, pleasure, and procreation. Her Roman equivalent is the goddess Venus. She is identified with the planet Venus. As with many ancient Greek deities, there is more than one story about her origins. According to Hesiod's Theogony, she was born when Cronus cut off Uranus's genitals and threw them into the sea, and she arose from the sea foam. Aphros, according to Homer's Iliad, she is the daughter of Zeus and Dion. According to Plato, Symposium, 180e, these two origins were of entirely separate entities, Aphrodite Arania and Aphrodite Pandemos. Because of her beauty, other gods feared that their rivalry over her would interrupt the peace among them and lead to war, so Zeus married her to Hephaestus, who, because of his ugliness and deformity, was not seen as a threat. Aphrodite had many lovers, both gods, such as Ares, and men, such as Anchises. She played a role in the Eros and Psyche legend, and later was both Adonis's lover and his surrogate mother. Many lesser beings were said to be children of Aphrodite. Aphrodite is also known as Scythere, Lady of Scythera, and Cyprus, Lady of Cyprus. After the two cult sites, Scythera and Cyprus, which claim to be her place of birth. Myrtle, doves, sparrows, horses, and swans were said to be sacred to her. The ancient Greeks identified her with the ancient Egyptian goddess Hatha. Aphrodite had many other names, such as Isidalia, Scyther, and Serago, each used by a different local cult of the goddess in Greece. The Greeks recognized all of these names as referring to the single goddess Aphrodite. Despite the slight differences in what these local cults believed the goddess demanded of them, the Attic philosophers of the 4th century, however, drew a distinction between a celestial Aphrodite, Aphrodite Urania, of transcendent principles, and a separate, common Aphrodite who was the goddess of the people, Aphrodite Pandemos. Aphrodite, perhaps altered after Aphros, Comophone stems from the more archaic Cretan Aphrodite and Cypriot Aphrodite, and was probably ultimately borrowed from Cypriot Phoenician. Herodotus and Pausanias recorded that Aphrodite's oldest non-Greek temple lay in the Syrian city of Ascalon where she was known as Arania, an obvious reference to Astarte. This suggests that Aphrodite's cult located at Scythera Cyprus came from the Phoenicians. The fact that one of Aphrodite's chief centers of worship remained on the southwestern Cypriot coast settled by Phoenicians, where the goddess had long been worshipped as Ashtat, S-T-R-T, points to the transmission of Aphrodite's original cult from Phoenicia to Cyprus then to mainland Greece. So far, however, Attempts to derive the name from Aphrodite's Semitic precursor have been inconclusive. A number of folk etymologies have been proposed through the ages. Hesiod derives Aphrodite from Aphros foam, interpreting the name as risen from the foam. Janda, 2010, accepting this as genuine, claims the foam birth myth as an Indo-European myth theme. Janda interprets the name as a compound Aphros foam and Dito, she, seems, shines meaning she who shines from the foam, ocean, supposedly a by name of Os, the dawn goddess. Likewise, Mallory and Adams, 1997, propose an Indo-European compound abhor very and high to shine, also referring to Os. However, etymologies based on comparison with Os are unlikely since Aphrodite's attributes are entirely different from those of Os, or the Vedic deity Ushas. Finally, the medieval etymological magnum offers a highly contrived folk etymology, deriving Aphrodite from the compound Habrodia itos, comma she who lives delicately, from Habros and Diata. The alteration from B to PH is explained as a familiar characteristic of Greek obvious from the Macedonians, despite of course that the name cannot be of Macedonian origin. A number of improbable non-Greek etymologies have been suggested in scholarship. One Semitic etymology compares Aphrodite to the Assyrian Bariritu, the name of a female demon that appears in Middle Babylonian and Late Babylonian texts. Hammerstrom, 1921, looks to Etruscan, comparing, Epni Lord, an Etruscan honorific learned into Greek as dot. This would make the theonym in origin an honorific, the lady. Tuma Frisk and Robert Beeks, 2010, rejects this etymology as implausible, especially since Aphrodite actually appears in Etruscan in the borrowed form Aperu, 
from Greek Afro, clip form of Aphrodite. Mythology Birth Aphrodite is usually said to have been born near her chief center of worship, Paphos, on the island of Cyprus, which is why she is sometimes called Cyprian, especially in the poetic works of Sappho. However, other versions of her myth have her born near the island of Scythera, hence another of her names. Scyther. Scythera was a stopping place for trade and culture between Crete and the Peloponnesus, so these stories may preserve traces of the migration of Aphrodite's cult from the Middle East to mainland Greece. In the most famous version of her myth, her birth was the consequence of a castration, Cronus severed Uranus' genitals and threw them behind him into the sea. The foam from his genitals gave rise to Aphrodite, hence her name, meaning foam arisen, while the Erinyes, Furies, and the melee emerged from the drops of his blood. Hesiod states that the genitals were carried over the sea a long time, and white foam arose from the immortal flesh, with it a girl grew. The girl, Aphrodite, floated ashore on a scallop shell. This iconic representation of Aphrodite as a mature Venus rising from the sea, Venus Anadomene, was made famous in a much admired painting by Abels, now lost but described in the natural history or Pliny the Elder. In another version of her origin, she was considered a daughter of Zeus and Dion, the mother goddess whose oracle was at Dodona. Aphrodite herself was sometimes also referred to as Dion. Dion seems to be a feminine form of Dios, of Zeus, the genitive form case of Zeus, and could be taken to mean simply, she, that belongs to Zeus in a generic sense. Aphrodite might, then, be an equivalent of Rhea the Earth Mother, whom Homer relocated to Olympus, adulthood. Aphrodite is consistently portrayed, in every image and story, as having had no childhood, and instead being born as a nubile, infinitely desirable adult. She is often depicted nude. In many of the later myths, she is portrayed as vain, ill-tempered, and easily offended. Although she is married, she is one of the few gods in the Greek pantheon who is she is frequently unfaithful to her husband. According to one version of Aphrodite's story, because of her immense beauty Zeus fears that the other gods will become violent with each other in their rivalry to possess her. To force all this, he forces her to marry Hephaestus, the a uh, humorless god of smithing. In another version of the story, his mother, Hera casts him off Olympus deeming him too ugly and deformed to inhabit the home of the gods. His revenge is to trap his mother in a magic throne. In return for her release, he demands to be given Aphrodite's hand in marriage. Hephaestus is overjoyed to be married to the goddess of beauty, and forges her beautiful jewelry, including the cestus, a girdle that makes her even more irresistible to men. Her unhappiness with her marriage causes Aphrodite to seek other male companionship, most often Ares but also sometimes Adonis. Aphrodite's husband Hephaestus is one of the most even-tempered of the Hellenic deities, but in the Odyssey, she is portrayed as preferring Ares, the volatile god of war, because she is attracted to his violent nature. Aphrodite is a major figure in the Trojan War legend. She is a contestant in the Judgment of Paris, see below, which leads to the war. She had been the lover of the Trojan Anchises, and mother of his son Aeneas. Later, during the war, she saves Aeneas from Diomedes, who wounds her. Adonis, the most prominent lover of Aphrodite is Adonis. He is the child of Myra, cursed by Aphrodite with insatiable lust for her own father, King Cyanerus of Cyprus, after Myra's mother bragged that her daughter is more beautiful than the goddess. Driven out after becoming pregnant, Myra is changed into a myrrh tree, but still gives birth to Adonis. Aphrodite finds the baby and takes him to the underworld to be fostered by Persephone. She returns for him when he is grown and strikingly handsome, but Persephone wants to keep him. Zeus decrees that Adonis will spend a third of the year with Aphrodite, a third with Persephone, and a third with whomever he wishes. Adonis chooses Aphrodite, and they are constantly together. Adonis, who loves hunting, is slain by a wild boar. He bleeds to death and Aphrodite can only mourn over his body. She causes anemones to grow wherever his blood fell, and decrees a festival. On the anniversary of his death, the shade of Adonis is received in the underworld by Persephone. Aphrodite wants to return him to life. Again, she and Persephone bicker. Zeus intervenes again, 
decreeing that Adonis will spend six months with Aphrodite and six months with Persephone. The gods are all invited to the marriage of Peleus and Thetis, the eventual parents of Achilles, except Eris, goddess of discord. In revenge, Eris makes a golden apple of discord inscribed Callistoi, to the fairest one, which she throws among the goddesses. Aphrodite, Hera, and Athena all claim it. Zeus delegates the choice to a mortal. Paris. The goddesses offer him bribes. Hera offers him supreme power, and Athena offers him wisdom, fame, and glory in battle. Aphrodite offers him Helen of Troy, the most beautiful mortal woman in the world, as a wife. As the goddess of desire, she causes Paris to become inflamed with desire for Helen at first sight, and he awards the apple to her. Helen is already married to King Menelaus of Sparta. The other two goddesses are enraged by this and through Helen's abduction by Paris, they bring about the Trojan War. In one version of the legend of Hippolytus, Aphrodite is the cause of his death. He scorned the worship of Aphrodite, preferring Artemis. Aphrodite caused his stepmother, Phaedra, to fall in love with him, knowing Hippolytus would reject her. This led to Phaedra's suicide, and the death of Hippolytus. Glaucus of Corinth angered Aphrodite. During the chariot race at the funeral games of King Peleus, she drove his horses mad and they tore him apart. Polyphonte was a young woman who chose virginal life with Artemis instead of marriage and children, as favored by Aphrodite. Aphrodite cursed her, causing her to have children by a bear. The resulting offspring, Agrius and Oyas, were wild cannibals who incurred the hatred of Zeus. Ultimately the whole family were transformed into birds and more specifically ill portents for mankind. By the late 5th century BC, certain philosophers had begun to draw a distinction between two separate Aphrodites, as opposed to a single Aphrodite whose characteristics varied slightly in different local cults of the goddess, Aphrodite Arania, the celestial Aphrodite born from the sea foam after Cronus castrated Uranus, and Aphrodite Pandemos, the common Aphrodite of all the folk, born from the union of Zeus and Dion. Among the Neoplatonists and, later, their Christian interpreters, Aphrodite Arania is associated with spiritual love, and Aphrodite Pandemos with physical love, desire. A representation of Aphrodite Arania with her foot resting on a tortoise came to be seen as emblematic of discretion in conjugal love. We know of this representation, said to have been a Crease elephantine sculpture made by Phidias Ferelis, only from a parenthetical comment by the geographer Pausanias. In the Symposium, of Plato, Pausanias, no relation to the geographer Pausanias, describes Aphrodite. He distinguishes two manifestations of Aphrodite, represented by the two stories of her creation. The older one, Aphrodite Arania, Hevni Aphrodite, is the daughter of Uranus, and inspires homosexual male, and more specifically, Ephibic, love, Eros. The younger, Aphrodite Pandemos, common Aphrodite, is the daughter of Zeus and Dion and all love for women comes from her. Aphrodite is also known as Aria, showing her connection to Ares, the god of war, whom she had extramarital relations with. As a result, she was, to some extent, made into a goddess of war. This is especially true in Sparta. Cult of Aphrodite. The epithet Aphrodite Acidalia was occasionally added to her name, after the spring she used for bathing, located in Boeotia, Virgil I. 720. She was also called Cyprus or Scythera after her birthplaces in Cyprus and Scythera, respectively, both centers of her cult. She was associated with Hesperia and frequently accompanied by the Oeds, nymphs of the mountains. Her festival, Aphrodisia, was celebrated across Greece, but particularly in Athens and Corinth. At the temple of Aphrodite on the summit of Acrocorinth, before the Roman destruction of the city in 146 BC, intercourse with her priestesses was considered a method of worshipping Aphrodite. This temple was not rebuilt when the city was re-established under Roman rule in 44 BC, but the fertility rituals likely continued in the main city near the Agra. Aphrodite was associated with, and often depicted with, the sea, dolphins, doves, swans, pomegranates, scepters, apples, myrtle, rose trees, lime trees, clams, scallop shells, 
and pearls. One aspect of the cult of Aphrodite and her precedents that Thomas Bullfinch's much reprinted The Age of Fable, or Stories of Gods and Heroes, 1855 etc., elided was the practice of ritual prostitution in her shrines and temples. The euphemism in Greek is hierodial, sacred slave. The practice was an inherent part of the rituals owed to Aphrodite's Near Eastern forebears, Sumerian Inanna and Akkadian Ishtar, whose temple priestesses were the women of Ishtar, Ishtaritum. The practice has been documented in Babylon, Syria, and Palestine, in Phoenician cities and the Tyrian colony Carthage, and for Hellenic Aphrodite in Cyprus, the center of her cult, Scythera, Corinth, and in Sicily. Markovich 1996 hours 49 minutes, the practice however is not attested in Athens. Aphrodite was everywhere the patroness of the hetera and courtesan. In Ionia on the coast of Asia Minor, Hieroduli served in the temple of Artemis. Modern worship of Aphrodite As one of the twelve Olympians of the Greek pantheon and thus a major deity, worship of Aphrodite, or Aphrodite as a living goddess is one of the more prominent devotionals in Hellenismos, Hellenic polytheistic reconstructionism, the revival of ancient Greek religious practices in the present day. Worship in the cult of Aphrodite today differs from the devotional practices of the ancient Greeks in several ways. Among Hellenistic reconstructionists, views of Aphrodite as a lustful fertility goddess have largely given way to an understanding of her chiefly as a goddess of love and passion. Such things as ritual temple prostitution are thought of as, at best, completely anachronistic outside of ancient Greek society, if not actually outright disapproved of. Instead, modern Hellenistic devotees make offers to her and invoke her name for her blessings and her favor for their romantic relationships including sexually monogamous ones. Here, ethical convictions of modern Hellenic polytheists are inspired by ancient Greek virtues of self-control and moderation. Hellenic polytheists of today celebrate their religious devotion to Aphrodite on two annual and monthly festival days. Aphrodisia is her main festival day, which is celebrated on the fourth day of Hecatombaean in the Attic calendar, falling in the months of July and August in the Gregorian calendar depending on the year. Adonia, a joint festival of Aphrodite and her partner Adonis, is celebrated on the first full moon following the northern spring equinox, often roughly as the same week. The Christian festival of Easter is celebrated. The fourth day of each month is considered a sacred day of both Aphrodite and her son Eros. Devotional offerings to Aphrodite can include incense, fruit, particularly apples and pomegranates, flowers particularly fragrant roses, sweet dessert wine, particularly commanderial wine from Cyprus, and cakes made with honey. Comparative mythology Ancient Near Eastern Parallels The religions of the ancient Near East have a number of love goddesses that may be similar to certain aspects of Aphrodite. Her cult in Greece was imported from, or influenced by, the cult of Astarte in Phoenicia. Hans Georg Wunderlich further connects Aphrodite with the Mnoan snake goddess. The Egyptian snake goddess Wajet was associated with the city known to the Greeks as Aphroditopolis, the city of Aphrodite. Pause in Ears states the first to establish a cult of Aphrodite were the Assyrians, after the Assyrians, the Paphians of Cyprus, and then the Phoenicians at Ascalon. The Phoenicians, in turn, taught her worship to the people of Scythera. An origin of, or significant influence on, the Greek love goddess from Near Eastern traditions was seen with some skepticism in classical 19th century scholarship. Authors such as A. Ingman, Kipros und der Ursprung des Aphrodite Cults 1881, attempted to portray the cult of Aphrodite as a native Greek development. Scholarly opinion on this question has shifted significantly since the 1980s, notably due to Walter Burkett, 1984, and the significant influence of the Near East on early Greek religion in general, and on the cult of Aphrodite in particular, is now widely recognized as dating to a period of orientalization during the 8th century BC, when archaic Greece was on the fringes of the Neo-Assyrian Empire. In native Greek tradition, the planet Venus had two names. Hesperos as the evening star and Osphorus as the morning star. The Greeks adopted the identification of the morning and the evening stars, 
as well as its identification as Ishtar, Aphrodite, during the 4th century BC, along with other items of Babylonian astrology, such as the zodiac, Eudoxus of Cnidus. Comparison with the Indo-European dawn goddess It has long been accepted in comparative mythology that Aphrodite, regardless of possible or oriental influences, preserves some aspects of the Indo-European dawn goddess Horsos, probably Greekos, Latin Aurora, Sanskrit Ushas, Janda, 2010, etymologizes her name as she who rises from the foam, of the ocean, and points to Hesiod's Theogony account of Aphrodite's birth. As an archaic reflex of Indo-European myth, Aphrodite rising out of the waters after Cronus defeats Uranus as a mytheme would then be directly cognate to the Rigvedic myth of Indra defeating Vtra, liberating Ushas, 